आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा आई मेड ए फिल्म कॉल्ड आजादी की राह पर हियर मिस्टर पृथ्वीराज वर्क जगदीश शेट्टी माइशेल वनमाला दुर्गा खोटे वी आर ऑल देयर एंड दिस वाज कंसीव्ड बाय अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कांग्रेस पर्सन कॉल्ड कुलवंत राय ही वांटेड टू मेक दिस पिक्चर द एंटायर स्टोरी वाज अ 40 इयर्स ऑफ Indian National Congress woven between two families a muslim and a hindu family and in the course of the events the rise of the congress was shown it is a very dramatic film but unfortunately it was not properly produced i played the role that combined uh, subhash bose and mamad ali and prithviraj ji played a role that combined gandhi ji's ideology as represented by nehru and one mala represented the young india and these are the symbolic uh, representations durga khote played mother india and uh, mr jagdish sethi played lala lajpat rai so this was the background on which the characters were built and the story was made i don't know because i didn't see the release of this picture here but it was released elsewhere and had a lukewarm uh, reception then for the first time i had the pleasure of working with nargis in a film called anjuman which was produced directed by her brother produced by her mother at the background of bhopal it was very interesting very nice to work with nargis because she was a very very talented artist and uh, the whole picture had a flavor of its own especially in the urdu language we did that picture for the first time and of course after that i worked with Nargis in few more pictures the next one i worked with nargis was called darogha ji again this was uh, set in bhopal i should say ordinarily nice film good reception and after that again i went back to pune navyuk studios to make a film called sajan ka ghar it also was a good film but uh, did not get a good reception well sometimes you make good and bad pictures also but pictures have to be made and so i made this picture then another in the year 1950 i made a comedy called chanda ki chandni with another outstanding actress called rehana then i think dn madhok directed a film for you now yes yes dn madhok as you know as i told you was a very famous lyricist and he is one of those people who had sponsored now shahid as a music director in the film that i directed called mala previously mm-hmm. so now was just one of the run of the mill pictures very pleasant with uh, background hills and all that because mr madhok as a lyricist always based his lyrics on folk songs it had a folk background well received it was an averagely good film then as i told you i did daroga ji and another film i did was called ladli that was probably my association with uh, mr anil bishwas the music was by him and it was produced by his wife ladli then i did another film later on with suraya called amar kahani suraya probably i did not tell you gave a playback for one of my pictures which i worked in pune called nai kahani so she had given the voice there and then she was a child artist and now she played opposite me in hamari baat also she was a child artist but here she played my heroine amar kahani as i told you before that we used to adapt many of this uh, english novels indian novels things like that this is an adaptation of a book called eastlin by mrs henry wood later made as jugnu with dilip kumar and uh, noor jahan very nice family story well received i think then in 1952 you did a film with jk nanda singar yes singar was a very very elegant film and we had a famous music director called khurshid anwar in it and my leading ladies were suraya and madhubala in the cast were mr singh durga bai khote and madan puri it was uh, again an adaptation of a foreign film it is called i think adaptation one of those pictures from paramount films it was a very well made film because first time i worked with nanda and jk nanda had played the lead in a film called vasan sena 
one of the earliest talkies with Nalini Tarkas and Inakshi Ramarao. So he, again, I had the good fortune with associating with people who had their uh, training in Ufa. J.K. Nanda was also an Ufa trained man. He spent some years in Germany. And uh, it was a very, very beautiful production and well received, I should say, because it had excellent music. That was my experience. But here I must say something which probably people know or don't know. The, originally, the lead cast was Prithviraj Kapoor, Suraya, Madhubala and others. And because Prithviraj ji had already launched uh, a stage, the Indian stage called Prithvi Theatres, so he couldn't give them dates. Then I replaced him and worked in this film, Singhar. You had a long association with K.N. Singh. Was this the first film you made with K.N. Singh? I, my memory serves my right. I think it was my first film with him. Because we, as when he came back from Calcutta, we had met each other and we were very close. Then uh, later on he had joined uh, Minerva. But uh, after Minerva he started freelancing. And uh, I think this is, you're right when you say that it's my first picture with Kain Singh. Then I think you did Rumal for Ramchandra Thakur. Again a Nargis star. Yes, there are two leading men and one heroine that was Nargis, myself and Rahman. This also was a story, I don't remember the name, but it is also an adaptation from a Holkins, Sir Holkins novel. We did this film, as films have to be made, good, bad or indifferent, but uh, luckily most of my films in which I worked, I had very good uh, co-stars with me. And uh, this film was directed by Ramchandra Thakur, with whom I'll be associated later on when we come to that period. Now I think your own as a producer and director, Sagar. Yes. As I told you yesterday, every actor's dream is to become a director or a producer later on. And I think I followed the same path. Sagar was inspired by Lord Tennyson's poem called Enoch Arden. The same story was made by Mr. Raj Kapoor as Sangam later on. There were many versions of it. But I stayed with the original. The original was a film play or a poem placed on the sea coast. It was about fisher folk. So I actually went on location, spotted my location throughout the western coast of India and had Nargis as my co-star and Bharat Bhushan. So here again for the second time Bharat Bhushan, myself, Nargis, Kane Singh, Durga Khote, we were all together, the old uh, group, I mean say brigade was there. I was very faithful to the theme and I personally think I, that this is one of the earliest realistic films made in which was shot in location without makeup and being true to the atmosphere of fisher folk. But unfortunately after I finished this film it got into trouble and it could not get a proper release. Well I lost a fortune doing this film, producing this film, but I'm not unhappy I did what I wanted to do. If it is a mistake, I am responsible for it. If it is a success, I should have got the credit for it. But uh, one thing I'll tell you about this. When we had these festivals, I met Frank Capra in one of the film festivals here, and I showed him a couple of reels of my film. And he was so elated and told me, that, Jai, look, we came to India to see Indian films. We haven't come to India to see Anglo-Indian films. What we are seeing is with frocks and hairstyles and dress suits is not the way you live in your country. We want realistic films. Later on, Mr. Sajit Rai made films that were really Indian, so he became so famous that he could project India as it should be. Well, I tried in my own way to do it, and after seeing the picture, he told me, Jay, why don't you produce, why was not this picture in the festival? I said, Frank, I am an orphan. You know, making films and running films also means so much of politics, and I am not a film politician. Then he encouraged me by saying, make more films, doesn't matter if they fail, but keep on making films, that is a blessing I got from Frank Capra. And another director to whom I showed this film was Alfred Hitchcock. He had come to India with Sabu and uh, he was invited by A.J. Patel of the famous Patel India Laboratories. And I was a guest there and we enjoyed an evening of song and dance. Then. I told Hitchcock that, uh, would you like to see a reel from my film which I produced? He says, why not? And I showed him the last two reels where there was a little suspense. 
He looked around and laughed and said, Look, young man, I think you and I went to the same school. I said, Thank you very much. That was my film. I'm not unhappy. There are still people who have seen that film and said, Well, it was a nice film. At this point, I think it's right to ask you one question since we are talking about Jairaj, the director. With the exception of one film, you have acted in most of your films, the ones yes. you have directed. Yes, yes. Now, tell me the problems that you would face directing yourself. You know, very few people have done that. In the West, we had Charlie Chaplin is the name that comes first. But later on in our country, now many have done it. Earliest to do was Mr. Shantaram and then Raj Kapoor, Devanand. Some of these people have directed and starred in their own pictures. Well, it's a nice question which needs a lot of thinking. The first thing is that you take in a double responsibility of starring in the film and directing the film also. But what you do is, when you're doing a film like this, you make it departmental. The actor Jairaj is different from the director Jairaj. So the director Jairaj has no sympathy with actor Jairaj because he wants things as he wants it, so that sometimes he's some of, he will cut off some of his best scenes, not because he's Jairaj the director or Jairaj the actor, but the director is more supreme, so he chucks out so many scenes. So that is how the director and the artist work with. But I tell you, it's a, a difficult proposition, but once you get going, you're able to find out two split personalities, both as an actor and director, you can carry on with it. We come to your next film, Raj Mukut, for Nanubhai Vakil. Raj Mugat was one of the run of the mills costume films. I've done a lot of them. So it was copied from uh, almost three musketeers. The theme was there of a state and intrigues in a state, things like that. It was one of these, as I told you, an entertaining picture which uh, gets the producer his money back with a percentage of profit. That is one of those type of pictures that I made. The next is Magroor, I think, Wadia movie tones. Ah, this is very interesting. In this picture, Nigar and Rahman played the leads, and the second lead with Meena Kumari, who once in a film called Eki Bhool, she played my daughter. And I've lived in to see that she played my heroine opposite me. Of course, I played with her later on in Mr. Abbas's film called Char Dil Char Rahe. And it was a pleasure working with her. And uh, it was uh, produced by... J.B.H. Wadia and R.D. Mathur, who was a cameraman, directed that film. It was quite a success, I should say. Then I think another important film of that period was Hamara Hindustan, directed by Paul Zils. Oh, this again is a very memorable association. This was uh, Dr. Masani's novel called, book called Our India. And Paul Zils was a German who did a lot of documentary work and a good friend of ours. What he did was to get probably the biggest cast ever assembled in this film and each representing India in his own way. For instance, I played two roles in it. One, I played Abul Fazal, the advisor to Akbar, and the other was I played Arjun opposite Devan and this Krishna. So actually the lead was played by Premnath and Nalini Jaivant, but there are a lot of actors in it. There was... Uh, Devanand, Devanand Prithviraj, Premnath, Premnath, Nalini Jaivan, then we had Durga Khote, Kain Singh, probably one of the biggest star cast assembled. The year 1954 takes me to a couple of films I did with Suraya. One of them was Rajputs. Rajputs a story put into a state, Rajput state of the present days. But there was one diversion in it that was they had a flashback where they showed the story of Hada Rani and it was authentic. The picture had a very, very good reception throughout because, as you know, when a producer is, has a successful picture with him, he takes his cast all over and tries to show off and we have to attend theatres to promote the film. And Rajput was one such film. Then I did Resham. Resham actually was Jean Valjean's uh, books, the story of a convict. La Miserables is the name. So that was done and I played the lead, a uh, character role in that. And Suraya was, had a romantic lead in it. Then after that, I did another film for the workers, a film for the Bombay Talkies workers. By that time, Bombay Talkies had come, fallen into bad times and all the workers got together and they wanted to make a cooperative film called Bad Ban, in which there was Devan and myself, Gop, Usha Kiran and uh, 
Fanny Muzumdar was the director, enjoyed making that film. But uh, I don't know to date if the workers were profited by it, but we did our free contribution in that film. That was Badban for Bombay Talkies for old memory's sake. This After was also the first cooperative film made in Indian cinema. I don't think so. In a way, uh, some of the films which Mr. Abbas made was also on a cooperative basis. Though it was a complete production, producer, director and all that. The latest film which got the President gold medal, Share or Sapna, in which my son Dilip Raj worked, was also a cooperative sort of a film. Because this angle has been there for quite some time. Even the film that I made for uh, Workers of Mohan Studio was a cooperative film. We shared, of course, the shared, we did not see our share, but we worked. A bit of our expenses paid, but we worked free for the workers. And uh, then after Badban, I played a villain's role in a gypsy film called Hasina, opposite Shama. It is one of the mill pictures directed by my old friend J.P. Advani, who had probably, I worked with him in about a number of films, five to six films so far. So it was one of the mill films. Then I did... Uh, Garibi for Ranjit again with Gita Bali and Nirupa Roy and probably that was my first association with Nirupa Roy and later on we were starred together in a number of films. Garibi is again the same Gathes, Sins of Vardar is the name of the poem, like the Foss, the man who sells his soul. So Garibi was directed by Ramchandra Thakur and after that I made a very interesting film called Lal Kumar, again with Suraya and Nasir Khan in the lead. I played the role of Dr. Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He used to be a normal man in the daytime and after 12 at midnight, he used to turn into a devil sort of a thing. And I had a chance to create my own makeup, which used to take about three to four hours. I was normal and then I had false teeth, hair, wigs and all that sort of thing. And for that picture, later on made with Sanjeev Kumar, they had taken the makeup man to Hollywood Sharosh Modi went to Hollywood to get that makeup because everybody was fascinated with the film made by Frederick March called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So that is the makeup that I also copied and was very successful. Here again, I go back into memory. This story and the screenplay was written by R.S. Chowdhury. That was Lal Kumar. Then this Raj uh, Ratan is the Mazdoor films. It's again a cooperative film that I made. And after that, I made a film called Lakho Me Ek. This was an adaptation of an American film called Meet Mr. Jordan. And one of my co-stars was now very famous Raj Kumar. And we both played heroes in that film. It did well. It was a different sort of a theme. It was like the old story that I told you once about Eki Bool, Interchange of Souls. So Lakhome Ek was that film. And then again I made a sort of a biographical film, I should say, called Sultana Daku, in which I played Sultana. And for that, uh, I had uh, help from the then curator of museum, Dr. Moti Chandra, who had met Sultana Daku in Allahabad personally. And I used to go to Dr. Saab and say, and hear how Sultana was and how he used to behave and what he used to do. I did my best to recreate Sultana Daku. And uh, later on, as I'll tell you, that I've been very fond of biography. That is one of my favorite subjects, history, biographies, psychology. And so this, I created Sultana Daku in that film directed by Mohan Sinha and he was supposed to be one of those people who were an expert in trick effects and uh, he passed away but he never passed his knowledge to other cameramen and he died with him and the remarkable work he used to do with his camera and nobody knows how he used to do it and it is still a mystery and people have not one of my best friends Divecha tried to find out from him but he failed and we still don't know how he did it and he used to do a marvelous job in this trick work. That was Sultana Daku. Then I was contacted by Gemini Studios to play a role in their film called Insaniyat, which starred Dilip Kumar, Bina Roy, Devanand, myself, Jayant. And it was a story taken from Pizarro. I think it's a Spanish play. It was an adaptation of that. And it was a pleasure working with Mr. Vasan because I think in my career, he's one of the finest producers whom I have met. And very understanding and already to his credit he had some great successes like Chandra Lekha and other films and Insaniyat and he imported Zippy who was also one of the stars of the film he imported uh, Zippy from Hollywood and Zippy for instance was an ape and it was more human than human beings and he used to act 
better than some of us what we could do and that was zippy and uh, i went to meet zippy once he was staying in an air conditioned hotel he used to have his soup and all that put on his night dress went to going to sleep and he insisted that he should be given a bath with eudicolone in it so that was zippy it was as i said he was more human than human beings and he did a fine job and the picture was a very big hit and after insaniyat i did see picture called jahazi lutera on the lines of sinbad the sailor the usual run of pictures now i come to the year 1956 I made another uh, autobiographical film called Bhagat Singh in which I played Chandrasekhar Azad and Prem Adip played Bhagat Singh though it was made crude but the subject was so popular it was one of the biggest hits unexpected runaway successes that I had and I toured Punjab with that picture and what an ovation we got it for that film and Bhagat Singh was a great film so now I was slowly stepping into autobiographical sort of films which I enjoyed mostly and I'll tell you about it later when i come to it and after bhagat singh then i went back to mr abbas again making that film munna it was an episodic film of a boy who goes through different social strata and finds himself and i played a millionaire who never had a child they bring him home and bring him up and later on he drifts so it had a very big cast david myself sulachana chatterjee it had a very very big cast in it and a uh, very intriguing film and very interesting film i should say and munna got uh, several international prizes for that after munna i did uh, another romantic film called tirandaz with madhubala in which i played the villain then i did uh, another sea romance called pyara dushman with master bhagwan master bhagwan with uh, nadira as my leading lady then i went back to make another film i won't say it is biography it was of course a legend called hatim tai which turned out to be one of the biggest successes of that time produced by homi wadia directed by him and special effects by babu bhai mistri it was a pleasure working with mr homi from whom i could learn a lot of things he was a man of experience and uh, some of the finest trick shots were done there and i remember at that time Uh, people like uh, peter pereira ravina gage and gupta the boys who later came out of uh, wadia became outstanding cameramen for special effects and hatim tai was a big success in this film as i told you before mr tripathi also had a role in it and it was one of my biggest hits not my favorite of course but one of my biggest hits and after hatim tai i did uh, two three small pictures called patal pari with uh, shakila grand hotel with uh, geeta bali and mumtaz mahal with uh, sheela ramani and veena in the year 1957 i start a new phase of my career with a film called amar singh rato before we go to the new phase in your career i wanted to ask one question twice you have said that you played the villain once in hasina and once in tirandaz yes now this was a period when you were an accepted hero yes and yet in two films you played the villain now this kind of interchange uh, was it possible in those days because today it is unthinkable you know as i told you before mr narvikar that uh, i was an actor and i still believe i am an actor good bad or indifferent in my own way exchanging roles did not affect my box office i was still considered a box office whether as a hero or as a villain but i liked the role and the role was much better than the hero sometimes what happens if you don't have a villain the hero is nobody if there was no ravan there wouldn't have been ramchandra and uh, i can give you more examples like if there was no uh, judas there wouldn't have been jesus christ and i won't go further than that so the conflict is very important in a film and uh, villain actually is the man who is the motivating force in a story and so whenever i got a good interesting role as a villain i never hesitated to accept it and the next again i was the hero so my professional status was not affected at all so now i come to that film amar singh rathore this was a historical film for this film i went to rajasthan i went to a place called nagore for where amar singh belonged i met many bhans as they say storytellers i heard and got the atmosphere about amar singh rathore the period and we came back and started this film and we I think I mentioned this before previously also I'm not repeating it we shot it in actual locales and that had a 
great effect on the audiences because it was credible. And then in the historical films, what happens is you got to create a character which the audience accept as if that character, historical character, is alive. That is very important. I did that later on, as I'll tell you in another picture also, for which I shaved my head for 11 months to be more true and honest to the characterization. So it is not only playing a historical role, but bringing that historical figure alive that is very important for an actor. And I did my best in Amar Singh Rathod. It is one of the biggest hits and many people liked it and it's still remembered as uh, a picture depicting the heroism of the Rajputs. That was Amar Singh Rathor. And after Amar Singh Rathor, I did another costume film called Raj Pratigya at the same time. But in between, I made a social film called Parivar with uh, Mr. Bimal Roy as the producer. And here again, we all the artists got together. Uh, you could call it a sort of a takeoff from Mahabharat. We were five brothers and five wives. Or I played the role of Arjun. And Vipin Gupta was Yudhishthir, then we had uh, Sajjan, then we had Anwar, then we had another uh, romantic lead, and uh, Mr. Kishore Kumar appeared as a guest star in it. And as usual, neatly done, as all most of the Bengali films were there, efficiently and neatly done. And it was a remake of a picture, a Bengali film, actually, which was directed by Bikash Roy. So that was Parivar. And after Parivar, I had the good fortune to be again associated with uh, Mr. Abbas and we did an Indo-Soviet film called Pardesi. This was again a very big star cast. It had Mr. Prithiraj, Balraj Sani, Nargis, Oleg Strezanov from Russia. Then we had Padmini, Manmohan Krishna, David. We were all together and uh, we did our bit here in India and for 10 to 12 weeks we were in USSR and I did my role. The Russian filmmaking is entirely different from our Indian filmmaking because they are mostly true to life. They are honest about it in the sense that, for instance, the scene that I had with Oleg Strezhanov was taken in the very uh, place on the river Volga where I meet him. I'm a Persian ambassador. I'd come to India and I'm now being an ambassador to the Russian government, then the Tsars, of course. I was passing through that and I meet this traveler who had heard all about India and he was going to India and we meet and we have a short conversation. Later on we meet again in India at New Delhi. It was a very beautiful experience working with the Russian unit and uh, we made that film. It was called Afanasi Nikitan in Russia and Pardesi in the Indian version. We had Russian artists also working with us. They used to speak Russian dialogues and we used to speak our Hindi dialogues. Our Hindi dialogues were dubbed in Russian and their Russian dialogues were dubbed in Hindi. So we had two co-production films. Again, now at the present time, I'm working with Mr. Shashi Kapoor in a film called Ajuba, starring Mr. Amitabh Bachchan and Rishi Kapoor. The unit is from the Gorky Film Studios. Again, it's the same thing. They speak the dialogues and lines on Russian and we speak in Hindi. And uh, they dub it and we have two different versions, both in Hindi and Russian. So that was Pardesi. And uh, with Pardesi, I had an opportunity to tour around Europe and, and meet some of the finest people like Ingmar Bergman in Sweden. Then I met some very famous people in uh, Paris. And in Paris, I could go to, they have got a department where they keep all, uh, like one of our archives. So I went and saw some shooting there, met some people there, friends. So I was, spent some time in Sweden, then in, in uh, France, then in England I could sketch up on some plays where I met uh, casually Sir Lawrence Oliver who was doing Titus Andronicus in those days. Then I met Michael Wilding, then I met uh, a French comedian. So I could see a lot of plays and films and meet film people. And that I tribute and I'm very grateful to late Mr. Abbas for giving this opportunity to meet all these people and work with some of them. This was your first trip abroad, was it? Yes, this is my first trip abroad. It was 1957-58, I think it is. Uh, no, it is 57. This, after I had finished Amar Singh Rathod and Hatim Tai, mm -hmm. I had gone down and I came back here. And then I, as usual, for our uh, bread and butter, I did films like Chal Baz with Nirupa Roy. I did a film called Daughter of Sinwad with Nadira. 
then this Raj Pratigya for Dinesh films. In between, I squeezed in a film as a director called Rajgar with uh, Shama and Shami playing the lead. Then I did uh, Bazigar. After that, again, I had a directorial assignment called Mohar in which Shami Kapoor and Gita Bali played the leads. And here again, I make a reference to my respected uh, R.S. Chaudhary, whose story and screenplay was there. And I should tell you that most of the plays that I have done or directed from Mr. R.S. Chaudhary's script, and Mohar was the same thing. After Mohar, then I had the good fortune to do another uh, outstanding film called Prithura Chauhan. This was again a historical film in which again I went to Dr. Moti Chandra, of the curator of Bombay Museum, who showed me miniatures, then he gave me some books of the period of Prithviraj Chauhan, because he was the last Hindu king before the Muslims came in. And here I must tell you one thing, as I always have told some of my friends, that in our country, we have not to be afraid of enemies without, but we have to be afraid of enemies within. And this has been there so true in all historical films, that I said that we are betrayed more by our own people than by outsiders. And this has been the fate of our country throughout. Prithviraj Chauhan was betrayed by Jaichand, and that brought in the Mughal. He was not Mughal, but uh, the Muslim king to India. And that is how the Muslim invasion started right from those days. So this was Prithviraj Chauhan, very beautifully done, historically accurate, and very good atmosphere, and very good uh, decor and costumes, and good music. That was Prithviraj Chauhan. After that, again, I did a national figure called Tipu Sultan, for which I went to Sri Rangapatam, Mysore, and Bangalore, and all other places, where actually I have seen the mounds in which the war took place between Tipu Sultan and the Britishers. And for this picture, first I went and paid my respects on the Mazhar of Tipu Sultan. He is buried next to his father, Hyder Ali, and his mother. So I paid my respects there before starting the picture and now my prayer was, Sir, you are a great leader and I'm trying to portray you. If you could inspire me to give even an atom of what you had, you are, I think I'll try to project that so that our people will know how many people, national figures have uh, sacrificed themselves for the freedom of our country and that was Tipu Sultan. And it also had a very good run, I should say, though at places it was historically inaccurate. Historical inaccuracies do creep in in a historical film because you cannot uh, condense the entire life in a two and a half hour film. But we take a few liberties to make it interesting. So some of the incidents are true and some are made up, of course. But the most important thing is to make the character alive. And I tried my best throughout my characterizations to make the character of the person which I'm playing to be alive and convey his message so that the identification of my character would help the audience to feel that these were our great people who fought for the freedom of our country. And that was Tipu Sultan. Then I did another small film, one of the spot boilers as they're called, Jagadaku. Again, I was again associated, I've been very lucky because in my life, Mr. Abbas and R.S. Chaudhary, people like this have played an important part. And a film was called Char Dil Char Rahe. It was about a crossroads. And this was at that time supposed to be the biggest star cast assembled in which there was Mr. Raj Kapoor, Meena Kumari, Mr. Balraj was there and I replaced him of a role of a socialist leader. Then we had Nimi, then we had Shami Kapoor, then we had Ajit. So it was a big star cast and uh, the location of the entire story was a crossroad where all characters meet. And it was a very beautiful film. I don't know sometimes what happens is good films as we now keep on crying good films and good films. But good films are films are associated with one that is successful. Not because it's good in quality, but success associated with a good film. It was a good film, but I don't think it was much of a success. Anyhow, film making films today is a, a trade in which Profit and loss are to be taken together, but Chardil Chal Rahe remains one of the memorable films that I've worked with Mr. Abbas. Then I did uh, a small film after that called uh, Bhagwan Ar Shaitan, 
with Srila Ramani again. Then I did another historical in 1960 called Lal Kila. This was about the reign of uh, Badr Shah Zafar, the last Mughal king, in which myself and Nirupa played the Rajputs who were in that revolution. It was a very nice film and some of the interiors were shot in Minerva's very famous uh, sets which were used to be constructed in Minerva. That was Lal Kila. This was another historical film that I notched up in my career. And after that, I did a film called Do Admi with Shashi Kala. Here again, I played a double role. And it was about the same time when Mr. Devanand was making a film called Ham Dono. Ham Dono. So there was a lot of comparison. But compared to his film, this was a small film, small uh, B-grade film. And his was an A-grade film. Of course, it had a greater uh, box Reach. office value. And ours was, of course, a small film. Then I made... Uh, one of those fantasies called Superman and the Return of Superman with uh, Nirupa Roy. Once again, a mantle of a very famous uh, national figure called Durga Das fell onto my shoulders. And Veer Durga Das, who was from Jodhpur, and I made this film and we shot uh, in Jodhpur, taking special permission. And uh, it was what a pleasure that when you live the past, the people where they lived, and died. You see, those monuments still exist there. And I did Veer Durga Das at Jaipur. And uh, it was also a very well-received film. This was another of my historicals after uh, Lal Kila. And uh, you know that in between these big films, which take a lot of time, I used to squeeze in some of these pot boilers because run the, his own house, as you say. and. Uh, Luckily or unluckily, in our times, we never had big money. Money was not there as it is now today because we are making very expensive films that cost money. So naturally, every department you have to spend. In those days, we used to economize, but we used to be honest and true to the subject. And after this, I made another film now called Jai Chitor, but it was about the story of Rana Pratap. If you remember in Rajputani, I played Shakti Singh. Here, I played Rana Pratap. Once again, after uh, Prithviraj Chavan, in which I forgot to tell you, I used a false nose, which I, the craft which I learned in Russia to build up a nose to suit the character. Here I played Rana Pratap, and uh, it was called Jai Chitor, very well received historical film of that period. And after that, another historical film I made was called Razia Sultana, with now called Razia Sultan in the present uh, version, but it is Razia Sultana. And I played uh, Altunia opposite uh, Nirupa as Razia Sultana. That was another historical to my credit. And then I made a few films like uh, Miss Goodnight, Pickpocket, both with Nishi. Then another uh, folklore, I wouldn't call it historical, a folklore film called Ala Udal. The story of two brothers, very famous. Ala Udal is very famous in UP. I played Ala Udal, in which my son Dilip Raj played the juvenile lead. This again we shot at Alwa, another beautiful place, beautiful locations, beautiful costumes. And I had the pleasure of meeting the Maharaj of Alwa. And they have one of the finest museums of armory, because I was fond of armors and arms and so I saw that beautiful museum in which you'll be surprised we have a saying ek mein do talwar nahi rehte. Lekin there I saw a talwar which had two talwars in the same man and I think it's a novel thing which nobody has seen you have two swords in the same scabbard and that I saw that in the museum that was I did Allah Udal then I did uh, a small film called Kala Samandar and uh, then another film is called Bijli Chamke Jamuna Par. Here I, again, Nirupa was my leading lady. The story was by R.S. Chaudhary. Very well done. Then I had a few small films called Jadugar Daku, Zara Khan, Mehu Jadugar. At this stage, in the year 1962-63, I had the good fortune to work in an international film called Nine Hours to Rama, or the 20th Century Fox film. Produced and directed by Mark Robson, who had already made uh, some very famous films like The Prize, In of Sixth Happiness. And uh, I came across the casting director. 
he wanted to meet some film people and I met him. So I was casted for the role of Judy Birla and I had an audition in Ashoka Hotel in Delhi and immediately I was signed up. What I must say about making a film, later on of course we had Gandhi film by Sir Ratan Barrow, that's a different story altogether. But he, Mr. Mark Robson asked me a few questions for which I had no answers. He said, look Jay, that you or Indian film industry is supposed to be the first or the second in the world making a number of pictures. What have you done to immortalize the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi? Have you done any picture? I said, no. Then he told me, do you practice what he preached? I said, I'm doubtful. So he said, if somebody else makes the picture, why should there be a furore? Because the film industry had taken an antagonistic attitude about this film. Anyhow, the film started in Delhi, then they shot some scenes in Pune and then Nasik, and they went back to London. And I also went to London to finish my work there. I played G.D. Birla in whose house, the hallowed ground where our father of the nation was assassinated, was shot. But actually they had to build the same set in London and we did all the action scenes there because it was impossible for us to do it here. We did a few exteriors but they made a correct reproduction of the Birla house there in London. Here I must say I met uh, Nelson Giddings with whom I am still in correspondence. He was the screenplay writer. This is taken from a book called Nine Hours to Rama. The author had come to India on the day Gandhiji was assassinated. He went through Delhi, saw the silence, the pal of Delhi's sorrow. Then he came back to Pune where he did a thesis on Gopal Krishna Gokhale and Lokmanya Tilak, for which he got a PhD. The book was banned in India, and the film later, of course, was also banned. But uh, in the meantime, Mark Robson had brought this property and wanted to make a film. He got the OK signal from the government authorities, and I became very friendly with Nelson Giddings. You'll be surprised what dedication when foreigners make our own films, I found for the first time. The day he landed in Delhi, he went to Khadi Bandar, bought four sets of Khadi pajamas, kurtas and a jacket and chappal and a Gandhi cap. I said, Nelson, what are you doing this for? He said, I want to feel, I want to feel what Khadi is, I want to live it. So till he left the unit, he had the same costume and I took him to late Pyare Lalji, whom he met and he bought all the books on Gandhiji, whatever material he had. They did a lot of research and uh, one more thing I found was that I saw about more than a hundred life-size enlargements of Gandhiji in different poses they had done. And Gandhiji was played by one of uh, my friends, J.S. Keshav. He looks so much like Gandhiji that uh, most of his scenes were shot in London and some of the outdoors were done here. So this is how they were dedicated when they make films on uh, great people. We shot this film in Delhi. I did a few scenes. I did my interiors in London. And Horst Buchholz, the German artist, actor, star, he played Godse opposite Jace Keshap as Gandhi. And Robert Morley, another famous English actor, played Sardar Patel. And another famous actor called Jose Ferrer, who played the detective. So these were the characters. And of course, as it was a novel, and they took a lot of license in it. But when I asked uh, Mark Robson, I said, Mark, what are you doing? He said, look, the canvas is so vast, we are not able to depict Gandhiji's life. What we are doing is, the moment the assassins arrived in Delhi at 9 o'clock and 6 o'clock the assassination took place, those nine hours, the last nine hours of Gandhiji, that is the name of the book and that is the only period we are covering, nine hours of his life, which he got before the assassins murdered him. This is the idea of nine hours to Rama. I wonder if the book is found. The book is very interesting. As being a novel and not a historical document, the author has taken, the author's name is Stanley Walport. He took a few liberties. That is forgiven in a film, 
but it was so beautifully done, especially the last funeral scene. They actually got the same gun carriage, the same ropes, same people from the Navy and Army pulling them. We got set up at 5 o'clock in the morning when Delhi had the coldest. That was on the 31st December, 1962. Coldest day in Delhi, zero at Palam and uh, degree in Delhi. We did the funeral scene there and they packed up and the entire shooting was done within 16 weeks, 12 to 16 weeks. They went back and they finished the picture in London. Of course, many of them have not seen it because the picture is banned, so is the book. And that is about nine hours to Rama. And uh, then I think you returned to your B graders. Yes. Gule Bakawali. Yes, they're all pot boilers, you know. Yes. Sarah Khan, Gule Bakali, Mayhu Jadugar, and uh, Zingaro, Captain Sheru. Then again, I had a break playing the male lead in Chandrasekhar Azad. It was life of Chandrasekhar Azad. Very well done, very well received. But of course, the standard was not A grade. Here I must tell you a very interesting thing about the director, Mr. Gautam, who directed the film. The picture was, they said, we won't uh, allow this picture to be released. He said, fair enough. He said, these are incidents that are not true. He said, you think it is not true? They said, yes, the censor said it is not true. He said, fair enough. He reproduced... Urdu papers, which he had preserved right from the days of Bhagat Singh and Chandrasekhar Azad, and proved it to them and asked them to have a man to read it and explain to him. They said, it's all right. Then he said, if you make up your mind, it's all right. Otherwise, you think you're true. I think I am true. Somebody has to decide, and that newspaper cuttings decided that their incidents were true, and the picture was passed. And uh, usually, as these pictures are, it had a fairly good run. That was Chandrasekhar Azad, again, one of my character creations. Then I slid back and I did a Marathi film called Fakira, which was written by famous socialist writer called Anna Bao Sathe, in which I played a role of a monk, you know, a very poor man, but who looks after the village, with Sulochana as my leading lady. That was my first Marathi film. After that, again, I did uh, a couple of pot boilers, called Shamshir and Son of Ali Baba. Now, once again, I make another historical film called Hamir Hut. It was about Rana Hamir. Here we went to Kota and Bundi, actual locales there. There's still some of the temples and structures that are there, so we shot that. And after that, again, I had another very interesting war film to be made in Marathi called Chota Jawan, in which Jagirdar played my father, I played uh, the son, and my son was played by Mahesh. This story, as it is told in Maharashtra, happened in a village where either a husband or a father or a brother had gone to war. And Ram Kabale treated the subject so well. And the 16 millimeter prints were shown to the army people. This was about the Chinese aggression. And it was quite very well received. And still I have fans who remember me from my Chota Jawan days. The most interesting thing was that I become a captain and my father, Jagirdar, is a subedar. When I come home, he stands attention and gives me a salute. The army discipline is there because he's a, a subedar and I'm a, it is not between father and son, but it was between a subedar and a captain. So that was Chota Jawan, another successful film in Marathi. After that, I did uh, a few more usually bread and butter films, which you called Point Boilers. That was Kofia Mahal, Ek Din Ka Basha, and Sarfaroz. And once more, I dwell into a historical film called Maharani Padmini. Maharani Padmini was played by Anita Guha, and I played opposite her. For this, we again, we had some beautiful interiors designed by one of our very famous art directors here. We went to Rajasthan and did our exteriors for Padmini. It was well received, but not a hit. Then afterwards, I did uh, some more films. And in 1965, I did uh, a film as a hero called Mujrim Khon Khoni Khon, later released as Khan Bahadur, but they delayed. This, in 1965, I laid down my tools, as I would say, playing the leads and went into my character roles. Before I did, in the interim, 
I made a film for the Metro Goldwyn Mayer called Maya, in which we had uh, foreign artists like Clint Walker and uh, Jay North, and in the Indian side there was myself, I as Johar and Sajid. Yeah, I played the Indian shikari and he played the white shikari. And the story was set in the jungles of Mysore, where we shot most of the picture. And in that, after doing that, they had a television series also called Maya, in which I worked in three or four episodes, for which playing a priest once I had to shave my head. It was called the Treasure Trow. So there I did three or four episodes for Maya. That was the beginning of my character roles after my uh, leads. So at this point, I think 65, uh, you did Mujrim Khan, Khuni Khan. That yes. was your last film as a leading man, but it was released in 1968, yes. if I'm not mistaken. And now can you tell me something about your um, phase as a character artist, the difference that you felt and experienced? Yes, first of all, I must say, uh, once you put on a grease paint on your face, you're an actor for life whether you play leads or character roles, but you are an actor. So later on, I put down my tools because there was this younger generation. Some people even then had not seen my earlier films. So time marches on and times keep on changing. So I had to change myself and I took up to character roles. But one thing I found in character roles, usually they call character roles after the hero and the heroine or the second hero or the vamp, is the father, the mother, the uncle, these are known as character roles. That is, I think, uh, that thing has changed now in the modern setup of making films that we are making very nice films. The characters are as important as the films themselves. We had some very fine artists like uh, Sanjeev Kumar and we have Nasruddin Shah, so many other youngsters who are doing it, Om Puri, Om Shiv Puri, all these people have really contributed because they have come from the National School of Drama from Delhi and also from the Film Institute of India and they are a group of privileged artists who have done a lot of uh, hard work and are keeping the tradition of acting alive. So I took up to character acting and I did various cameo roles as a doctor in Neil Kamal I played, then as the commissioner of police in a number of films. Then I played a retired uh, major, a retired army man. Roles like this came my way. But uh, I remember a very dear friend of mine, David, who's no more. He gave me an English adage saying, never refuse an offer and never ask for a job. So this I'm keeping to myself. that I, If there a job comes, I never refuse and I don't ask for a job. So the character roles have been coming my way and I'm still active and doing all these roles. I mean, some of the roles that have been outstanding was I played a karate, karate master for teaching Zenith Aman in Dawn, a picture made very, very successful by Amitabh Bachchan. Then I did a, a small teacher's role in Masoom, which is another successful film. So I'm still very active and doing character roles. Now, let's get to another aspect of your personality and uh, that is the social work. Yes. You see, I always felt that the underdog, as it is said, is always neglected. And I, uh, coming from a long journey from the silent days to this present films, felt that some of our artists, technicians have been neglected. So we, some of us got together and made a committee called the Film Functions Committee years back in which Duan Scherer was our secretary. And what we did was to collect funds so that we could give it to the blind schools, the handicapped children, the army widows. So in this connection, I was a producer of a number of shows, starting right from Kashmir, from Bakshi days, right to Ceylon. We did shows and we collected money. We had funds and we did a lot of yeoman work by supporting our artists, technicians and all that in their hard times. All the money was done. Now, of course, we have different funds as we collected a lot of funds after our film strike in 86 Hope. We did it. So we wanted to help the industry and this is one of the outlets I found for my unfulfilled desire of working on the stage. But I had presented a lot of stage shows, many of them very successful, with very famous music directors like Shankar Chekishan, 
and other music directors. And of course, two big stalwarts were always approached for that. One was Mr. Raj Kapoor, who, as you know, is a legend in his own time. And then Dilip Kumar, so is he a legend. So these people were approached first, and we used to all get into them, because they are members of the same committee. So, and I was in charge of the shows, and my friend David was the compere. I used to design the sets, the program, and presentation, and David used to do the master of ceremonies role. And uh, I think in my career, I must have done more than about 80 shows like this in a span of 30 years, starting from uh, Night with the Stars, which uh, Mr. B.K. Karanja, or then of Movie Times editor, had started. That was the beginning of my social work through stage. Later on, I did uh, work for Film Fair, and almost for 28 years associated with David. We were always there for the Filmfare Awards night, which was, took about a lot of planning, and uh, we presented the shows. Then I did uh, a few shows for Film World. Then I am associated even now to an institution called Sursing Ar Samsad, because I like classical music, and it is a platform for the up-and-coming musicians. And then being married to a Punjabi, the Punjabis own me as a son-in-law, and uh, Punjab Association's Basaki Night, for the last 18 years, I've been planning that show with Mr. Pran as my colleague. And in spite of this, the street I lived, I'm a chairman of the Kar Nagrik Seva Samaj Society, so trying to clean the streets, uh, helping the municipality. Then another facet is my cousin, Dr. Jay Surya, was a very famous homeopath who studied in Germany for 16 years. So I learned a bit of homeopathy, and I do free treatment for people, and that is one of my hobbies. Another of my hobbies is painting, and of course sports. And my first love, of course, is my wife. My second love are my books. And I have a family, five children, three girls and two boys. And one of my boys is in the States. The other is in Bombay. He's also in films called Delhi Praj. And I have three daughters, so I have never combined my family with my profession, and that is why till now that I am working, and uh, with all good wishes, I hope to carry on a little longer. Just two things I would like to mention before we really close. One is that uh, the unusual thing is that you have acted with uh, all three of the so-called triumvirate of Indian films, Devanand, Dilip Kumar, and Raj Kapoor. I think Raj Kapoor he did not really act with, but he was there in a small role in Hamari Bar. Yes, yes. And two other interesting things which I would like to say before we conclude, and that is uh, that 15th April 1988, Mr. Jairaj will begin his 60th year in films. He, along with I think a few others like Lalita Pawar, have been active right from the silent era till 1988. I mean, this is the longest innings in cinema, Indian cinema at least. And the other thing is that his first film as a leading man was released in 1929 and his last film as a leading man was released in 1968. So 40 years as a leading man, that is another record for Indian cinema. Thank you.